Hello again, this is Evangelist Mike McCurry. It's such a privilege to continue to bring to you a message from Evangelist Paul Levine, the founder of our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated, was started by the grace of God and the work of Evangelist Paul Levine back in 1938. This very radio program in the years of 1957 or 1958 was birthed as well. And all of that was due to God using Dr. Paul as a conduit for his glory. And today, I'm excited to bring to you an important message. Whether you are young or old, but especially for our young people, I'd ask you, if you have a niece, a nephew, a grandchild, or maybe one of your very own children that needs to hear this message, if you would... Send this to them. Maybe have them listen with you today and throughout this week. I'll give you a few moments before we really begin the broadcast in earnest. But you can also find each and every one of these episodes on the Bible Tract Echoes podcast. You see, we're talking about, from the very lips of Dr. Paul Levine, our founder, this topic. Friends. Amnon had a friend. We, you and I, must be very careful who our friends are. Dr. Paul is going to ask this question in just a moment. Who do you listen to? Let me ask you now. Open your ears and listen to Dr. Paul speak to us about friends. Did you notice the Bible says here that Amnon had a friend? Be careful about your friends, young people. Be careful about what kind of friends you have. Now, here's a young man who wouldn't listen to his dad. He wouldn't listen to his mother. He wouldn't even listen to his half-sister. He wouldn't listen to the ones that are trying to help him. But he did listen to a friend who gave him some wicked and evil advice. You know something? Friends will mold your character, and the wrong kind of friends can ruin your life. The influence of your friends sometimes is greater than the influence of your family. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 15 and 53. What that means is the wrong company will ruin your life and ruin your morals. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You see, the Bible warns you not to listen to the wrong crowd. That's why the Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. The Bible has a lot to say about friendship. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. And there's much in the Bible about the kind of friends you ought to have. Now look, the right kind of friends will help you to do what's right. And the right kind of friends will help you to be what's right. Your close friends, now listen to this, your close friends show what kind of a person you are. Or your close friends show what kind of a person you are becoming. Your close friends show what kind of a person you are going to be someday. Now, no true friend would give you wicked and evil advice. No true friend would entice you to do wrong. No true friend will lead you away from God and lead you away from the Bible and lead you away from the church and lead you away from parents who love you and those who care. Now, where do, where do most young people learn to do what's wrong? Where do they learn it? They learn it from their friends. You know that, you see. If some of you smoke, uh, who, who urged you to smoke? Wasn't your mother. Uh, now, maybe your mother smokes, but she doesn't want you to smoke. Can you imagine a mother saying uh, to her daughter, Now, honey, uh, you're uh, 12 years old. You're old enough to smoke now. So I want to teach you how to smoke. And you come over here now, and we'll light up a camel, and you can smoke the camel. Now, does, does the mother do that? No. The mother may smoke. And you may see your mother smoke. But it's not your mother who says, I want you to smoke. You know, you know who it is? It's your friends. It's your so-called friends. They're the ones that get around you. They're the ones that offer you the cigarettes. They're the ones that offer you the marijuana. They're the ones that offer you the beer. They're the ones that offer you rotten literature. Now, you may see some of this at home. You may see your dad drink beer. But when your dad say, hey, son, you're 15 years old now. You're old enough to be a real man and drink beer. So, son, I, I want you to drink a glass of beer. There may be some dads low enough to do that. I heard about one who did. But usually it's not the dad. The dad may drink, but he doesn't want you to be a drunkard. See, he don't want you to be a bleary-eyed sot. No, sir. 
And it's not usually your dad who says, I want you to learn to drink whiskey. And it's not usually your mother who says, I want you to learn to smoke. You learn that from your friends. And that's why you got to be careful about what kind of friends you have. No telling what you'll do if you get with the wrong crowd. No telling what you'll become someday or what, where, where you'll land someday if you get out with the wrong crowd. Look, many young folks would rather please the crowd that's trying to lead them to the devil and it rather please the crowd that's trying to, that will, the, the devil will use to wreck their lives, wreck their bodies, ruin their future, blast their service for God. They'd rather listen to them than listen to their parents. They want to listen to their parents. They say, don't preach to me, preacher. Don't preach to me, mom and dad. Don't preach to me, youth director. But you friends can preach to me about your booze and your tobacco and your dope and your rotten literature and your rock music, and if you preach to me, I'll listen to you. Young folks, look, you listen to the wrong crowd. You listen to the crowd that's going to help you damn your life and ruin your, your future. Well, I know, Brother Paul, that some of these things are wrong, but all my friends do these all, all these things. My friends smoke, my friends drink, my friends lie, my friends steal. My friends got all this rock music. My friends go to the dances. My friends go to the nightclubs. My friends... Well, listen, that doesn't mean that you have to, just because your friends do. Can't you be different than your friends? And besides, if you've got the friends that are trying to get you to do wrong, you ought to hunt up some new friends. Your friends will either help you to do right or wrong. Your friends will help you to stay pure or be dirty. Your friends will help you to get drunk or stay sober either way. Well, it depends on the kind of friends you have. Your friends will help you to stay clean or... Uh, or pollute your body with tobacco or booze or dope or whatever it is. Your friends will either help you to flee youthful lust, or your friends will lead you into sex sin. That's what your friends will do. Your friends will either help you to enjoy good, decent music, or your friends will brag about the rock stars and get you to buy and listen to God godless, wicked rock records. It's your friends will do that. Now, go back to the story for just a minute. Here's Amnon. He's got this pretty little sister. And uh, he wants her. It, 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 it's a wicked thing. It, look, now, it, he was guilty of wicked, unnatural passion. He wanted to lie with his own sister. Can you imagine anything as low down as that? And he knew it was wrong. He wanted her. And he told his friend about it. Then his friend came along, so I'll tell you what to do. See? I'll tell you what to do. Oh, I'd sure like to have my sister Tamar, but I, I know I shouldn't. And I just, I'm just sick about it. And this friend who turned out to be an enemy, his friend said, I'll tell you what to do. You just act like you're sick. And uh, your dad will hear about it. And then your dad will come in and say, hey, son, I'm sorry you're sick. What's the matter with you? And then you tell your dad you're sick and say, dad, you know, uh, I don't, don't feel good, and I wish that um, I wish you'd have Tamar come and fix me a little lunch. So, uh, fix the lunch right here in my house where I live, and so that uh, see the scheme was to get her in there. It's a dirty, rotten, low down, no good, wicked scheme. Get that girl in there. You act like you're sick. Ask your dad to send her over for the lunch. So that's what he did. He acted like he was sick. David the King found it out. He goes over there. And there he is lying in bed. And David says, what's the matter? Amnon, don't you feel good? And, oh, oh, no, I don't feel it. Moaning and groaning. I believe my gallbladder's busted. <laughs> or maybe my appendix is busted. My pancreas won't work. I swallowed my tonsils. And, uh, oh, I got a headache. And this don't feel good. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, I'll send for the doctor. We'll get you to the hospital. And we'll give you some medicine. No, 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 don't do that. I just want Tamar to come in here. And if you get Tamar to come in here and fix me a little lunch and some tea and crackers, that'll settle my stomach. That'll get rid of the gallstones. And that'll fix my tonsils. And that'll heal my appendix. And all I need is to have Tamar come in and fix me a little lunch. So David fell for the scheme, sent the girl over. The girl came in there. And he said, uh, she got the lunch fixed. He said, uh, bring it into the other room over here. And when he got her in there, he grabbed her. And he said, lie with me. 
And she said, don't you do this. Don't do this folly. Don't be a fool. Don't do this. But the Bible says he was stronger than she was. So he forced her. And after he had raped his own sister on the advice of a friend, immediately his so-called love turned to hate. And the Bible says his hatred that he had for her now was more intense than the love that he thought he had for her before that. Now he got what he wanted from her. Now he says, you get out of here. You know what he's doing? After he got what he wanted from her, he's going to drop her. He's going to get rid of her, get her out of here, lock that door, don't let her in. He, maybe he tried to make it appear like maybe she had seduced him. She goes running out of there holding her head and she grabs some ashes, put them on top of the head as a sign of, of great sorrow and distress and rip that robe, that, that, that garment that said that she was a virgin and she comes crying out of there and here's absolutely the real brother. He looks her over. He said, you've been with Amnon? He knew what had happened. He figured it out. He said, don't worry, I'll get him. I'll get even with him. And... Uh, the rest of the story I told you a little while ago, two years later, he had him killed. Now listen, young folks, sin will find you out. It took two years before Amnon got hacked to death and stabbed to death. Sin will always bring a payday. Judgment will always come. It may not always come right away, but it always will come. Someday you'll have to pay for your sins. Hello again, this is Mike McCurry to close out the broadcast. May I be very candid, very blunt with you? I make no apologies as the current host of this program for the intensity, the vigor that Dr. Paul brings to this message. It's so very important. I know for me in my own life, especially as a young person, the effect that friends, both for good or evil, had upon me. And still to this day, I must be careful of my friends. Let me ask you, as a mature Christian, as a young person, maybe as someone who is a little bit directionless, unsure of yourself, how are your friends? Have you ever considered that? Do they help you? Do they hurt you? Do they bring you closer to God? We are going to continue this topic of friends throughout this week. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we will get into the meat of this message from Dr. Paul Levine. Was he speaking to young people back in the 80s when he originally preached this message? Absolutely. But it's still pertinent today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.